Hey everybody, good to see you back once again. This is going to be a rather short episode tonight, but I wanted to take this time to answer a very common question I get in the comment section. And that is, what should my D2 or D4 starting engine have for compression? Well, these were not ever a really high compression engine to begin with. And I'm telling you from personal experience, they'll hit at 60 PSI and run and start well and perform right all day long. So I would say probably... 80% of the starting engines out there running now that have some hours on them are likely hitting right around that 60 PSI range. That being said, we've got one that's as close to brand new as you can get right here. So yeah, you can see I took some of the periphery items off since the test run yesterday. We're getting ready to start bolting all these things up. But first, I've got my compression gauge hooked onto this. We're gonna see what this one has right now. A Little bit of a backstory. As soon as I put this on the engine and had everything on top of it, before I even ran it, just out of curiosity, I did do a compression check on both cylinders just to see after fresh rebuild where this thing was. I was consistently 60 PSI and if I spun it over through enough compression strokes, I could manage 70 on the gauge. Now that I've ran this though, I can tell we have a little bit more compression that we're pulling against when we pull on that rope. So let's see what we get. Gauge is a little bit upside down, I know. But this is the best place I could put it without it falling into anything. So give the first pull, see what we got. And we've hit 70 right there. I see I got a little bit of bleed down, so we'll see if we can uh, squeak a little bit more out of there before we lose it all. There we hit 90. Try for one more here before we lose it. About 90 again. So we gained solid 20 PSI just from running that in a little bit. We're all put back together. So what I mean when I say running it in is basically just wearing the internal engine components to one another to get better sealing surfaces. We're talking valves to valve seats, but primarily piston rings to cylinder walls. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I've already done the first oil change on the starting engine. Um, you know, they don't hold a lot of oil. Here's what I drained out of it. And yeah, that's some pretty dark stuff. That was brand new oil before we ran it the other day, yesterday. And we've got probably 25, 30 minutes worth of runtime on that engine, darkened this oil to that extent. I did a little bit of an experiment though. I have a number of these round magnets. These came out of um, Ford automatic transmission pans. Sometimes when a uh, automatic transmission core went back to the factory for rebuild, it didn't always have a magnet left in the pan. They're handy to have and they're, they're pretty strong as you can see. So that's what they look like before they go in. I dropped one in here last night and I think you can see kind of some grayish trails in that oil. We'll see what the magnet looks like in here. There we are. It looks like a fuzzy donut. <laughs> that's, that's how much iron accumulated in that engine oil just from that brief run-in time we had on this engine yesterday. And I would bet the majority of that is cast iron piston ring and cast iron cylinder wall material. Just the fine grit that comes out of those components just scraping across one another. That's why we hone these cylinders at a specific grit to a specific cross hatch. It's basically a controlled accelerated wear rate to get those pieces, those rings and those cylinder walls worn so perfectly to one another that they seal up the best they possibly can. And that's just a whole lot of tiny little iron filings that were picked up by the oil and suspended in that. And that's why I like to, for the first few starts of these small little starting engines, I'll drain the oil out and change it between every start. As long as I can pull the stick and all of a sudden it's noticeably darker than it was. You see, we got nice fresh clean oil in it again. If I run that next time and I pull that stick after I shut it down and it's dark, I'll change that oil again and I'll do it again and again until it stops getting dark so fast. Also remember these starting engines don't have an oil filter. So you don't have anything that's continually straining all those particles out of the oil, keeping it cleaner longer. So there's 
two routes you can go when it comes to engine oil. And I know I don't talk about engine oil very often because people just get too crazy about it. But without getting into too much detail, you can run a non-detergent oil in an engine that does not have an oil filter for the fact that it allows those particles to settle out, find the low points of the engine block and just kind of stay there and remain undisturbed without being you know, suspended in the oil and ran through the bearings over and over and over again. Or you can do like I'm doing here. You can run a detergent oil on an engine that does not have an oil filter because it keeps those particles suspended, animated in the oil better. The only caveat to that is you need to be draining that dirty oil out often and replenishing it with new, replacing it with new. So if you run detergent oil and you're going through a break-in process like that on an unfiltered engine and that stuff just stays in and it just starts going through bearings and everything else, you're going to start wearing that engine at a faster rate. So yeah, the first several starts I do on a freshly rebuilt pony, I will drain that engine oil out every time between starts. Anytime I pull that stick and it's noticeably darker, that stuff gets drained out and we put some new in. It's, it only holds like a quart of oil. It's plenty affordable to do that. After a while, when you're not you know, wearing that thing in so much, everything's kind of found its happy spot, you can run that for a lot longer and it stays clean for a lot of the time. So yeah, that's uh, neither one of those approaches are wrong, okay? I actually have another CAT engine here that does not have an oil filter, my little Caterpillar 10. Yeah, they didn't put oil filters on those back in, what, that's 1929. Anyhow, I run non-detergent in that one because here's the difference. The Cat 10 has an all Babbitt bottom end. So you've got Babbitt bearings on the rods and on the mains with shims, you know, in them. And as that Babbitt wears, periodically you have to go into that engine, take the oil pan off, check all your bearing clearances, and then pull shims out as needed to tighten those bearing clearances back up and then put it all back together. That's the perfect time to clean all that settle out out of the bottom areas of that engine. So starting engine's not that way. You pretty much put them together and they stay together until they're worn out enough they need another rebuild. So that's why I'll run a detergent oil in a starting engine that's not filtered, but I prefer a non-detergent in my Cat 10, an engine like that that isn't filtered. Neither one of those approaches is wrong. And I know you guys are gonna get in the comments or get in a fight in the comments section. We're trying to do this in one take, so ignore the mess ups. I, I know you guys are gonna get in a fight about it because people do every time I talk about engine oil, but that's what I do with it. Your mileage may vary, so. I think we've pretty well covered that. We should know now what uh, a pretty good baseline is for a brand new starting engine for compression on a D2 or D4. That one starts on first pull. It's got a good crisp exhaust note and is happy to run all day long. Idles right down, sounds good. So that pretty much covers everything I want to talk about tonight. Tune in again, everybody.